Hey guys, it's Jim. Welcome back to my Aurora HDR 2018 tutorial. This is video and part number two. In this video, we're going to go over a little more detailed look at the filters. We're going to do some brush masking and things like that, as well as get into the layers panel. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close that and close that. Now, in the last video, I showed you how to apply presets, which are down here, and then also how to come over here and open the filters panel and take advantage of many of the filters that are here. So in this case, we're going to use only filters, no presets, make adjustments to this photo, and then go from there. First, I want to cover a couple of things. This is the histogram. So the histogram basically shows you the distribution of light in the photo. All the way to the left is dark and all the way to the right is bright. There's also these tiny little triangles. So if you click them, you'll see that these sections lit up in blue over here. And that will indicate sections that are just really dark, that are basically black. Now, the flip side of that is if you click this triangle on the right, it'll add a little red spot. And there's one tiny one that I see in this whole photo. And that basically indicates areas of highlights where it's completely white, where it's just blown out. So that's a good way to gauge you know, how well exposed is your base HDR photo. In this case, I think it's really well exposed. Now, I don't use those a whole lot, but they're helpful to know. But you can also tell just by looking at the histogram how well exposed it is. The more concentration of stuff, if you will, in the middle, the more evenly balanced your photo is, right? If everything was kind of bunched to the left, then it would be a darker photo and vice versa. All the way to the right would be a much brighter photo. So that's histogram. You also have information here. Uh, there's my three exposures with the exposure compensation. It says three images, ISO 100, 16 millimeters at F13. That's handy to have. As I mentioned in the last video, I very rarely shoot a negative two, zero, plus two, or a centered set of brackets. I generally expose to the left. This is a great example, especially in bright daylight, such as this photo was taken. I pretty much always shoot pretty far to the left because a plus two exposure in bright sunlight is going to be basically white. So to me, unusable. Um, and so there you go. So You've got two tools here that we'll cover in a subsequent video in a little bit more detail. That's lens correction and transform. They basically allow you to realign vertical lines and move the photo around. We don't need to do it in this photo, so I'll skip that until the next time. What I want to get into, however, is all of these filters. So you can reset all filters and create presets from that menu, but we haven't done anything yet, so there's nothing to reset. So let me start with HDR Basic. I start with this one. In fact, I like the order of these filters. I think they're very well done and intelligent in terms of how they're laid out. I use them um, pretty much in this order. So white balance, you do have some presets here, so you can come in and adjust those accordingly based on these presets if you feel like you want to. Um, I generally don't do that. You can also use an eyedropper. You come over here, you pick basically a target neutral. And what you're doing is you're telling the photo, the spot that I'm about to click is what I consider neutral. And therefore, Mr. Photo, please adjust the white balance accordingly. So let's say that that's a target neutral. And when I click it, you can see that the white balance has changed and the temperature intent, which comprise the white balance, have been adjusted accordingly. I'm gonna reset that because again, not really something I use. It's a great tool. I think that works maybe really well for portrait work or something. For me, I like to just sort of create my own photos and my own look, and I like to do it all manually, but maybe I'm a control freak. I don't know. So I would come in here, maybe take a little bit to the left to get a little bit of blue, maybe a little bit of right to add a little bit of that, uh, take away some of the green, right? Um, exposure, obviously, you know, will brighten or darken the photo. I don't really need to use that one here, but contrast for sure. Drag that to the right, and, and you can look. I mean, it really makes the colors pop. So I think contrast, very, very um, uh, important filter or slider to use, right? So I'm going to take that back maybe to around 50 or so. Uh, HDR Enhance. If you use the, the previous, either of the previous versions of Aurora, you'll remember a clarity slider. Clarity is gone. It's been replaced by HDR Enhance. And I'm going to drag it to the right. You can see what it does. It's very similar to Clarity, but in my opinion, it's better. It's more advanced. It brings up the tones and textures, but it doesn't mess up things that you don't want tones and textures to show up in, like the sky. So if you look at the sky before and after, you can see it's changed some, 
but it's not like a uh, mess, right? It's not a mess. I think it looks great, and I'm at 80, which is pretty high setting. So I probably wouldn't go 80 all the time. That's a little bit crisp, but you know, I would definitely go 30, 40, 50 range. And this photo, that's 33. I think it looks great. So that's a great filter. Smart tone. Drag it to the right. You increase the overall brightness of the photo, but it does it intelligently. So basically, when you drag it to the right to brighten, the stuff that's dark gets brightened, whereas the stuff that's already kind of bright doesn't really get impacted a whole lot. And vice versa is true. When you go to the left, the stuff that's already kind of uh, um, in shadow doesn't get much darker, but the stuff that's really bright does get darkened. So I love this filter. I use it all the time. I'm going to go a little bit to the right here. I think highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks, pretty self-explanatory. As you drag these, you'll either increase or decrease the uh, impact of each of those. So I'm going to you can double click, by the way, on the slider name to set it back to zero. I'm gonna move on to color and close that. Saturation and vibrance, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. Drag to the right, you get more intense colors. To the left, you get less. Um, in this one, I think I'll leave the saturation where it is, maybe bump up the vibrance like 15 or so, just to give it a little bit of pop. Color contrast is an interesting component here. I love it, but if you take a look at it, as I drag this to the right, it basically creates more contrast between colors in the photo, so it really makes the colors pop quite a bit. I think it's an underrated and often ignored slider, but I think it can be very impactful when used uh, appropriately. And you could also combine the color contrast with maybe a decrease in saturation, uh, and as I've got here, an increase in vibrance. Let me show you the before and the after. I like what we're getting here. I think it still looks very natural, and by the way, you can always open the before and after slider to sort of see how things are. And of course, as you may recall from the previous video, here's the history slider. You can see it's been just a few minutes and we've already done a whole lot to this photo and we're not even done yet. So that's it for color. Next up is structure. Structure basically accentuates details and um, it's similar to a clarity and HDR enhance in that regard, uh, but it's very powerful. If you drag it to the right, you're gonna very quickly get that crispy HDR look and you won't get that with the HDR Enhance. I use structure sparingly, so just be careful with it unless you're looking for a grungy kind of HDR look. Denoise will smooth out a photo, and if you look at it now, it's very soft, almost painterly, and you can boost that and smooth it and create very soft, gentle effects very quickly. I always do this on a separate layer because I want to do that usually just in the sky, and I'll show you that in a moment. Image Radiance. Add a romantic glow to your photos. Look at that. I mean, I just think that looks so cool. But if it's too shadowy, bring up the shadows a little bit. You can increase the vividness and the warmth or decrease the warmth of the, uh, of the impact there. But just that slider, couple of movements there, created a really painterly, you know, warmer, sort of a romantic looking, almost nostalgic look, uh, kind of a technicolor sort of approach. Great filter. I use it a lot. Polarizing filter, right? Drag it to the right. It's just like a polarizing filter you use on your lens or on your camera. Drag it to the right and it decreases the, the brightness of the brighter spots in the photo. Okay, HDR details boost. Another way to increase details in a photo. This is kind of like a sharpness slider and it separates it between small, medium, and large. You also can protect the highlights so it's not going to create a lot of crispiness in the sky. And then masking. It basically divides these into zones, and the more masking you use, the more it's going to offset the impact of that across the various zones. Again, careful with it. It can create really crispy, crunchy photos like structure can in a short amount of time. And if you're going for that look, great. You'll probably love this slider. I use it pretty sparingly, and in fact, I use it selectively, but it's still very powerful. Glow creates sort of a hazy look to the brighter parts of the photo. So if you want to create it's almost like a fog filter in some ways. It takes the highlights and really cranks up the sort of moodiness and haziness to them. I think it's really interesting. I use it a lot on neon signs, especially if they're lit up and it's kind of dark out. They kind of brighten up with that filter and add some interesting effect. Top and bottom tuning. This is a great filter. You can set the orientation. In other words, where do you want the dividing line between top and bottom to be? Do you want it to be up there? Or do you want it to be down here? By the way, do you want to tilt it left or right? I'm just going to leave it in the center. Once you've got it set, you just click set orientation. And then you can go into the top and you can, let's say, decrease exposure in the top or increase. 
In this photo, I'd probably go to the bottom. I might increase the exposure just a little bit, maybe add a little contrast to the just the bottom, and maybe a little bit of warmth just to warm up some of these pebbles. Let me show you the before and after of that filter. There you go, and there you go. I think it looks great. Very powerful. I use it a lot. Tone Curve. Now, this is a filter that could, can take an entire video just to itself. I'm not going to go into it a lot uh, in a lot of depth here. Google it. I've got a couple of YouTube videos using the Tone Curve in Luminar. You can check those out. You can also just Google other people's videos. There's a lot of stuff out there. You can take advantage of it. But basically, it gives you a lot of control over lifting shadows and compressing highlights and creating different looks. You can go in here and alter colors. So you can do all sorts of things. And I'm not going to mess with it on this photo. Just know that it's very powerful and it really deserves a dedicated video just to that. So I may get back to that one later. HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And it basically lets you take each of these color channels and adjust the color hue the color saturation or intensity and the luminance or the brightness of that. So I could say in the luminance for blue, I could say, well, I want to make the sky blue brighter so I can go like that or I want to make it darker so I can go like that. You can see how that works. Very powerful. I use it on a lot of photos, again, generally selectively. In this photo, I might bump up the saturation of the red just to make it really pop, but maybe take the luminance down so it's not quite over the top in your eyes. And the before, you can see the red and the after, right? That's how that works. Color toning, also known as split toning, allows you to divide the highlights from the shadows and operate them separately in terms of the hue or the color choice and the saturation, which would be the intensity of that color. So if I wanted to add some warmth to this sky, I could adjust hue to maybe the yellow tones and then drag it. And you can see it's warming up all of the, the more highlighted parts of the photo, which would include this foreground here and the sky. Now that's not a look I'm going for and don't need in this photo, but it's something very powerful and to be aware of. Dodge and Burn is a wonderful filter. I love it. It's new to Aurora. It's super powerful. You just click on Start Painting. You can choose Lighten or Darken. And by the way, the Lighten has a plus in it. And if you'll see in the middle of my mouse, there's a plus sign. If you hit the X key, that'll change you to Darken and you'll notice the circle now has a minus key. So you might come in here and say, well, I want to lighten something and I want to left bracket key will decrease the size of your mouse and right bracket key will increase. And then you can come over here with the strength and maybe take the strength down to 20 and say, maybe you want to paint a little bit a lighter look on this mountain here. That's a great way to just selectively edit your photo. And there you go. So I'll just say done. And the before, you'll notice that's quite a bit darker. And the after, there it is, a little bit brighter. So again, selective editing, you can do that on the same layer as you use other filters. And the last filter to talk about is the vignette filter. So you can quickly add a vignette or uh, go the other way, kind of a reverse vignette, which is kind of an antique look. And then of course you can increase or decrease the size of it, as well as the shape and the feathering. Feathering will make it a harder edge or a softer edge. Now, I don't want to add a vignette to this photo, so I'll just reset it. But let's say you do add a vignette. You also have the option to increase the inner brightness, which, as it implies, you just brighten the center of it. And you can also say place center. And let's say you want to place the center of the vignette there. You just customized your vignette. So that is it. Uh, that's how I would edit this photo. Let me show you the before and after. You can see we came a long way from the center exposure in the bracket set compared to this finished photo. But that's a tour and a deep dive on all of the powerful filters in Aurora HDR 2018. I hope it helps. There's more to talk about. In fact, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to open the layers panel. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And this is where you can get customized. Let's say you want to bring up some detail in those mountains. Let's say you want to use structure and you just want to drag it real far to the right. Now, it's going to crisp up the entire photo, but if you go click the mouse and then you use your brush, you're in paint and 100% opacity, you can paint that adjustment right there. So that's a way to selectively sharpen one section of the photo using a mask. You just say done and I can show you. I'll turn that mask off. There's the before. You can see the details kind of missing and there's the after. Now, another way to use a layer 
add a new adjustment layer, come in here, and instead of structure, this time I want to add denoise. Let's say I want to soften up that sky. Maybe I want a really dramatically uh, sort of soft and creamy sky. Well, I can drag all these sliders on denoise really far to the right, and again, it softens up the entire photo, but you just grab a brush, you ink, uh, in this case, I'm going to increase my uh, cursor with the right bracket key, and then you just come, and I'm doing a really rough job of painting here, but you can just come paint that across the entire sky, and there you go. Let me click on that, and that'll show you where my mask resides on my photo, and I can come over here and make some enhancements to it if I like to. Click it again, and it disappears, and I can say done, and I've now created a very noise-free, soft, kind of dreamy-looking sky. There's the before. You can see a little bit more detail in the clouds. And there's the after. So that's how you take advantage of the basic functions of layer. Add a new layer and apply a filter to that layer and then brush it in selectively so that you can customize the look of your photo. And that's how you take advantage of the power of layers in Aurora. And by the way, we also covered all the filters in depth. And so that hopefully gives you a good understanding of how to take advantage of all these powerful tools in Aurora, use them to your advantage, and craft the photos that you see in your mind and want to create on your computer. So that's how it works. I hope that this video has helped. If you enjoy these videos, please click the subscribe button, follow along as I continue to produce these weekly. Click like, maybe leave a comment if you have some feedback for me, and don't forget to share with your friends. I appreciate it very much. I love doing this stuff. I'll keep posting the videos. You guys keep coming back. That's a deal, okay? Thanks, I appreciate it. See you next time. Thanks again, my friends. Adios.